Hey everybody, Tactic Angel back on the PlayStation 5 to take another look at a premium ship in World of Warships Legends. This time it is the Tier 8 Royal Navy battleship Marlborough. For this review, we'll not really start with some history, move into analysis, discuss your commanders, and then run down the stats with you. Then, of course, we'll finish off with some gameplay. If you do want to skip around, you should see some time codes in the description to help you out. As far as history, there isn't a basis for this ship, really. Wargaming acknowledges this is a mostly hypothetical ship, and I'm not sure that goes any further than saying that Great Britain is a nation, and it has a proud shipbuilding tradition. As far as what this is, it's basically a vanguard-like hull with King George V guns. The reason a design like this wasn't considered is mostly because the 14-inch gun was a compromise for the King George V, while Great Britain hoped to reduce the size of battleships further during the 1936 London Naval Treaty, when it kind of looked like everybody out there was staying in the 14, 13, or even 11-inch artillery department. After the treaty system fell apart, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to build a ship with smaller guns than the 15, 16, and secretly larger guns sailing around out there. Plus, they didn't have loads of these 14-inch guns laying around like the numerous and wildly successful British 15-inch 42 caliber Mark I naval guns, which is why those ended up on Vanguard. And yeah, this kind of looks like a Vanguard. End of history. Marlborough in World of Warships Legends is kind of an odd duck. Being the first premium Royal Navy battleship at Tier 8, she is very much going for the same but different sort of approach as the Tier 8 Tech Tree battleship Temeraire. This means a relatively softly armored battleship that shoots lots of HE. Probably the best thing about this ship is if you don't take a lot of torpedo or citadel damage, you have tremendous HP recovery potential through the use of the ship's super heals. At least on paper, for whatever penetration they may lack, a dozen 14-inch guns have a good potential to start a lot of fires and create some pretty unrealistically high DPM numbers. She's also reasonably well defended from air attack, though I personally wouldn't want to take any AP bombs in this, even if I might get a few planes on the way in and the way out. The unfortunate thing about Marble is that her weaknesses can largely wipe out most of the advantages that come with this ship. She has poor gun range and truly shocking dispersion. Unsurprisingly, with such wide quadruple turrets on a vanguard hull, the firing angles aren't great, though they are perhaps better than you would expect, but it can coax you into throwing away your hit points. Since she doesn't have access to range mod in slot 4, not surprising since Temeraire doesn't either, the only real way to deal with this is through the commander, which more or less forces you to not play this ship's improved HP recovery or risk having to drive so close to enemies that your armor is really going to be easier to exploit. And this ship has perhaps the most easily exploited battleship citadel in the entire game. When we come to commanders, it would be no surprise to anyone that my natural inclination is to run this ship with Charles Madden. For these ships that come with two super heals rather than three regular heals, a well-leveled Madden can more than double your HP recovery, and by limiting the number of fires you can take on your ship, you might even get a chance to use all of them. The issue is that at 16 and a half kilometers for range, that's gonna put you at a pretty large disadvantage against other battleships, if someone can see you. There is also no guarantee that if they're on the edge of that range, you'll be unable to hit them with any sort of consistency given the limited options for dispersion, which is a real issue on this ship. For the other battleship commander, Cunningham offers the opportunity to both increase the range and also get your dispersion under control, at least a bit. You'll still get pretty easily outranged, but the improved accuracy is noticeable. These choices both increase your vulnerability to fire, but that also means you're not building into that super heal, which does make having such a strong HP recovery device kind of feel only slightly better than normal since you're stuck with just two charges. And at least for those of you who like to take an aggressive position, who are, I guess, internet famous, or, or both, this can feel a little disappointing since it's a lot less necessary on Temeraire. For Jellicoe, there's not a lot of great options here. While the Marble has decent concealment, going triple concealment here is a great way to experience the full effect of RNG on your shells. She doesn't have a lot of 
good consumables, so getting one extra heal and one extra secondary consumable doesn't quite make this more viable. While Jellicoe's base trait is useful for improving the strength of your heals and clawing one extra knot out of your engines is okay, I would say the rest of this is more or less a big fat nope. One out of ten would not recommend. As we jump into stats, everything you're going to see on screen is base statistics, with the exception of concealment, which includes the camo that comes with the ship. Marlow has the potential to be a very survivable ship, not because she has particularly good armor or hit points. With 76,800 hit points, she's sitting right around the middle of the pack for now. The armor here is listed at 19 to 381 millimeters, and here we can see that most of the ship is really 32, which means other than the belt, turrets, and conning tower, she takes HE damage just like any other Royal Navy battleship. 381 millimeters is not great turret armor, and it's definitely the weakest belt armor that you'll find here, tied with Temeraire. Unfortunately for Temeraire, your citadel in that ship starts just above the waterline, but if we look at the Citadel on Marbo, it would be hard to describe how truly catastrophic this Citadel is on a battleship. But if it were a dirigible, I think the best description for it would be, oh, the humanity. If you think Yamato and Musashi suffer from the side, they have 120 millimeters more armor than this. Even Vladivostok's Citadel is smaller and more well armored. If you have difficulty staying alive in other battleships, then Marlboro Citadel is an invitation to a whole new level of education through suffering. That would be challenging enough on its own, but considering the short range of your guns and the number of 18-inch battleships and ships with improved penetration angles, sometimes there's very little that you can do about it in Marlboro. To finish off the bad news, you also have 28% torpedo protection, and that's just kind of in the bad territory. On paper, at least, the firepower of Marlboro is pretty impressive. With 4x4, she offers 16 barrels in a broadside, combine that with a relatively swift 25 second reload, and the DPM numbers can look impressive on paper, leading the pack in both potential AP and HE damage. That's true, but a bit deceptive. With 1.4 Sigma, the Marlboro really tests the boundaries of UK dispersion. Honestly, I think I'd probably get better groupings out of my own shotgun at similar ranges, but we'd have to do that test on the moon since there's no way Buckshot can fly that far with all this atmosphere getting in the way. This may not be such a big deal because you'd assume the ship with these small guns would shoot mostly HE, and I think you'd be right there. You're tied with Republique as best fire starter at the tier, but where Republique also gets to ruin cruisers from any angles with her big AP, Marlboro is pretty inconsistent with penetrating battleship citadels at any range. In fact, she's pretty inconsistent with even hitting battleship-sized targets at long range. Some of that's probably the NyQuil, though. I've been pretty sick this last week. But in any case, you'd think it'd be sort of easier because this 16.6 range is the shortest at the tier. This thing can be pretty nasty if you can get a destroyer off guard at close range, but driving in close is generally not advisable. And to save you some mental math, this secondary battery is bottom of the barrel as well. The secondary battery does help to combine to give you pretty good AA suite, ranging out to 5.2. You're not going to do too much damage there unless someone flies into flak, and it won't aid your teammates all that much. In any case, it is often enough to make a carrier think twice about attacking you. If they do decide to go in, you have an additional 517 damage per second at 3.5. That's a pretty real number, second only to main currently in overall AA. In fact, it's more than four times as much as Musashi, so if I were a carrier, I'd leave this one for late game after it's taken enough HE to knock down that number and farm something else first. In terms of maneuverability, Marlboro is pretty good clocking in at above average 31.5 knots, which is probably its best advantage versus the somewhat lackadaisical Temeraire. She has a good turning circle and very responsive rudder for a battleship as well. Though on PC this ship is listed as very stealthy, Marlboro isn't quite as stealthy as Ruprecht or Temeraire, and frankly it doesn't even have an advantage over the average tier 7 battleship. Still, her concealment is about 400 meters better than most legendary or tier 8 battleships, 
300 from the air, and she's only detectable from 13.5 while firing from smoke, which can be expected with the small main battery gun caliber. This can be an advantage in a pure battleship versus battleship engagement, but most of the time those battleships will be supported by cruisers and destroyers. So yeah, as we jump into consumables, I've given away the surprise here, but you do come with your standard battleship damage control party. After that, you have two charges of a super heal. Since there are only two charges here, this makes getting four charges that much more sexy. That said, you're going to have to make some choices if you want that. Otherwise, two charges here are still better than three charges on most battleships. Then, unfortunately, all you have left is your secondary targeting consumable. Obviously, if something's close enough for you to use this, you should probably do it. It is just a thing that is there. All right, and with all of the stats out of the way, we're going to jump into some gameplay. We're going to be on two brothers. We're going to get into this really quickly. Obviously, we got the Marlboro here with its camouflage scheme. It is not as gray as I want it to be. But anyway, ignoring that, we'll go ahead and put my commander up on the screen. This is probably no surprise to anybody who's ever seen me play a British battleship. I enjoy hanging in there for the long ride. Keep calm and carry on all that good stuff cheerio etc uh, in this case what we're trying to do is maximize the potential of our heal and also just just hold on we're going to be on fire forever we're going to be taking shots we're going to be putting out really poorly aimed shots uh, best case scenario in this ship is that you can get the enemies to drive towards you uh, because if they realize they can drive away from you and probably still shoot you with your terrible range, it's not going to work out very well for you at all. So in any case, we start out the game early with some shots out on the Friedrich de Grossa. We managed to get one fire, and that's pretty okay. Obviously, you can see that Saipan way off in the distance. 18.8 .8 isn't an unreasonable range for a battleship to be able to shoot at tier 8. That said, I don't have a lot of tier 8 battleships set up to shoot that far. That's just me. In that case, we got a really nice grouping with our forward battery hitting 7 times out of 8. And landing 10,000 damage plus what appears to be a permanent fire on the Friedrich de Grossa. So we're pretty happy about that. It's only got 16 inch guns. It's, I mean, only. I have 14 inch guns, so maybe I shouldn't complain. But he's not going to be able to get through my front armor uh, unless he can get some plunging fire. I don't think he's going to do that at 10.2 kilometers. We have a Marlboro out there. It is maybe not a super great use of time to try to set a Marlboro on fire because as you can see I'm on fire I don't really care that much now what I'm doing is backing enough behind this island just so it's kind of a pain to shoot at me we put some more shells out there we get some more pretty decent hits and start yet another fire. When things are going well for you in this particular ship, uh, it's easy to start to put together damage in a hurry. You can see we're already up to nearly 60,000 damage. If we land a couple of shells there, we inch ourselves over 60,000. And that's just shooting HE like, you know, any any old person who just loaded the game for the first time. Now here we have the Ustagotland. It is a little scary to be shot at by torpedoes. We're going to go ahead and start backing up as much as we can. Uh, you can see we did land two shots against it. We got some damage. Not more than you would expect. Not less than you ex expect. Uh, the way that his dispersion looks, I go ahead and throw on the gas here at the end because 
I just don't want to get hit by a torpedo. And we threat a couple of those guys. We're a little more in front of the Suzuma than we would like. It's a pretty good fire starter, as you can clearly see. But it's not a big deal. We pen basically every part of Azuma as long as we hit it. Problem solved. We throw on a heal and we're back above 80%. You know, this is just this is just workhorse annoying uh, British battleship nonsense. That aircraft carrier warning is obviously not for us. He's probably no closer than he was the first time we saw him. So we're not going to worry about shooting at him. We're just going to continue to shoot at the things that are right in front of us. You know, at ranges where we can actually hit. Uh, we do see that something else is going on, though. It looks like somebody's going through the middle of the map. Now we are going to go ahead and load up AP so you can see what this looks like. This is against a Musashi. It is not exactly miles and miles away from us. So this should give you a pretty good indication of like both the accuracy and also the penetration you can expect at six kilometers. So I would probably suggest not spending too much time on AP, uh, even against really, really vulnerable targets, or at least battleships. I think at this point I realize it's actually a Saipan on the enemy team, even though we've already seen it. It feels bad, man, because Saipan has too many, too many torpedoes. Uh, but we're back, we're back to HE. We've got five seconds to live until basically we get half a new ship. We live the, the five seconds, we start printing a new ship, and this whole, this whole stupid game starts over again. This is, this is why I play British Battleships, because this doesn't require a lot from me, and I think it's hilarious. It is, it is the highest joy of British Battleships, because no one else can do this sort of ridiculous nonsense. Uh, now one thing I will say is that that shot from Mazuma is a good demonstration. He got me probably very, very sh shortly in front of my belt and straight into my Citadel. That happens a lot with American Battleships. Um, it is a lot more painful with American Battleships, so this is a, a gentle reminder that any angle that allows you to shoot the back guns here is a bounce chance. It's not a bounce guarantee, it's a bounce chance. And so, in that case, we didn't get the chance part. We got penned. And you know, we're, we're kind of low, we're in the will to rebuild range. We start going forward, but maybe we'll have some second thoughts about that uh, for whatever reason. Manage the quick dodge there. We're gonna continue to put really, well, not poorly aimed so much as just wildly aimed shots out on Azuma. And obviously we've got our front two guns that are currently staggered due to the damage they took earlier. We're going to see if we can't get a couple of cheated shots in here with our rear guns. Maybe finish off that battle cruiser and down he goes. A couple extra hits land on us. That's all well and good at this point since Will to Rebuild is in effect. Anything that we don't take that kills us is actually just giving us more healable damage. So, you know, that's that's a game design decision. Um, and eventually I guess it will maybe go away. Nobody knows what will replace it. But for right now we'll go ahead and take the free HP while it's there. 
Marlboro continues to shoot AP at the front of us. You can see, in that case, he is not rewarded for his 1.4 Sigma, which is not wildly surprising. Our back guns swing around. We get some shots out into Saipan. Burn his Damacon. He's got a minute-long Damacon. Now I'm going to take a bunch of damage, so I'm going to go ahead and start healing <laughs> so that I can just barely survive that as well. Just, just more being annoying to the enemy. Um, He misses a couple of uh, torpedoes there. And obviously we are uh, moving in towards that island that is mostly blocking line of sight. Finally creep along the high caliber. And you can see we've got a lot of ships here all all jammed up. This is going to end pretty quickly here for the Marlboro. Uh, he actually gets killed by another player on my team. And now I'm just kind of looking at that Ustagutland, and it is this is exactly the sort of range where this ship is really really dangerous to a destroyer. Um. I actually really don't want this Yamato coming around too quickly because if he does, maybe the Ustagotland will pre-launch his torpedoes. Instead, I stay just outside of the two kilometers. We go ahead, put the precise amount of damage into him and finish off the game. And that is what a decent game looks like in Marlboro, I guess. Marlboro? Uh, so anyway, closing thoughts on this ship. You'd think a King George V type ship on a Vanguard type hull with Temeraire type heel would be an easy sell to me. All of those ships I like, so Bob's your uncle, right? Yeah, not really all the way there for me on this one. I find this a little bit too RNG dependent, and where those other ships can come off of HE and slap with AP, the 14 inch gun just doesn't make nearly the sort of impression that it did at tier 6. Again, against a target with any kind of sensible angle, you're more or less locked in to an attrition game, and frankly the dispersion is really testing the limits of my supposition that accuracy isn't all that important to HE spammers. At the end of the day, you still do need to hit your target. When it does work, it can be pretty fun. When you take 200,000 damage in a game and live, I at least enjoy that. But other than the speed and a bit of AA, Temeraire is really, really quite a bit better. And frankly, if you can get past how much of a criminal misuse it would be to take Republic out and just shoot HE, it actually would be better too with better AA, a speed boost, avoid protecting a sloped interior belt, and turtle back for a waterline citadel. In short, this ship pays a lot for that super heal. I'm not sure it's all the way worth it because you can get similar heals on much less vulnerable ships. In any case, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.